Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Everyone checking in on commodities. We're going to look at the longer term time frames as we have been doing for the last few weeks as that's what I'm focused on as a trader, not actively trading in the commodity space. Although I did trade the oversold bounce on oil on Friday, but patiently waiting. So we're going to look at the longer term perspectives. Gold has seen a nice little bounce. It had a bullish reaction to economic data that came out this week, but we're still just watching for lower highs to be set. So one thing about gold and precious metals, if you are bullish precious metals, you have to be bearish the dollar. That's pretty much the way that the inverse correlation between the two works. And just an example of the inverse correlation, here's a chart where I've got the regular candlesticks here are gold and I inversed the chart. So gold is inversed here and the dollar is regular. So that just shows how correlated that we are. This is over years. This is the last, oh, five, four years on the weekly time frame showing that they are very inversely correlation correlated again i'm showing a direct correlation here because i inverse the gold chart don't want to confuse people but that was the way for me to visually see just how they interact in their inverse relationship so that being said if i'm bullish on gold i have to be bearish on the dollar and i personally can't be bearish on the dollar right now we just broke that key resistance of 97.71 with a monthly higher high the weekly time frame just saw an equilibrium break bullish, make, breaking multiple levels. Again, hitting the highest prices for the dollar right now. Last time we were at these levels was in May of 2017. So pretty much two year highs for the dollar. And also the S&P 500 is at all time highs. And as we know, there is the correlation with gold being a bit of a safe haven in market weakness. And we certainly don't have any market weakness right now. So where I stand, I have to see the dollar lose the weekly uptrend and see weakness for me to be bullish on gold. And anything above 96.75 on the dollar is going to be a weekly high or low. And we're going to be watching how much further follow through can these bulls see. If we were to get up to 103.82, still a ways away, about 6% away. But if we were to get to that level, that would be the highest price in 15 years. So I'm watching the longer term timeframes, the weekly and the monthly, the bulls are in full control on the dollar. So checking in on what gold is doing. Gold is on the monthly time frame, forming a multiple year equilibrium. We have a pullback from a monthly lower high at 1347. And now we need to form a monthly higher low. So we have a bounce underway right now. Looking at it on the weekly time frame, we ended with a green week. Anything on the weekly under 1310 is just a lower high. And I like looking at it on the daily time frame because we can see, yes, it's a nice oversold bounce. But look at this chart where, again, I'm not normally a trend line drawer, but I liked this visualization when I was just keeping an eye out for patterns. And we have a clear downtrend resistance line with multiple rejections with our lower highs. There's our weekly level. Anything under 1310 is a lower high. And here's our support on the way up. And now it's potentially going to act as resistance. So we have to see how we react to this price early next week. This move, we are just looking for a lower high to 1310. If the bulls can make their way up towards 1300, pull back, form a higher low, and then break this lower high pattern, that will begin to shift momentum notably, and that will have us look for the potential of our monthly higher low already being set. If we are done consolidating on gold, and if 1266 is the low, then that would be bullish. That would leave a, a bullish lean on the direction that this equilibrium is going to break, in my opinion. So that's where I stand and patiently waiting again, have to see that weakness in the dollar. We're just looking for the dollar to give us a daily higher low. After that bull break, we saw about 0.6% follow through, which is pretty big for DXY. And now we just need a daily higher low, anything above 97.26. Checking in on oil. So oil dumped. This is the monthly time frame. keeping in mind that the longer term perspective, we are anticipating a monthly equilibrium is going to form. And we know that Trump wants cheaper oil. So we have to be aware of tweets. And anytime oil is really strong, I just wait for that Trump tweet to talk about how oil is too high or what he's talking to with OPEC about, things like that. So 
Is this our monthly lower high? We don't know yet. We don't have enough pullback, but we did lose the daily uptrend. Here's the weekly chart. It's a very clear bearish reversal candlestick. It's our weakest candlestick in almost two months on the weekly chart. So here on the daily, this is the most significant pullback that we've seen from a high on this move. And let me just double check that. This is the one that would be contending it. 8% pullback. And actually I take that back. So it's the second most on this pullback. But we lost the daily uptrend is the bottom line. So now we are looking at a, an equilibrium on the short term time frames, the hourly it might form. I scaled into an oversold bounce just for a quick flip for a day trade. But what we're looking at on oil is, are we going to confirm the downtrend now? Because losing the uptrend and being in a downtrend are not the same thing. We have lost the uptrend. We have closed below the 12 period exponential support for the first time since March. And that's six weeks. And we've lost the higher low pattern as far as price levels go. So if we bounce and form a daily lower high, which we are going to expect compared to 66.58, and then we drop down to a lower low, that will be a confirmation of a new daily downtrend. We will then zoom out to the weekly chart and say we have to form a weekly higher low compared to 54.50 to keep the bulls in a weekly uptrend. So the weekly uptrend is not anywhere near at risk right now. Step number one for the bears is to confirm the daily downtrend with a lower high and lower low. From there, we're just going to look for a weekly higher low to form somewhere in the low $60 range if that does play out. And then it would require a bounce on the weekly, a lower high, and a loss of the uptrend in order for us to say, all right, our monthly lower high is set. Now we need to form a monthly higher low and we'll be looking down in the low $50 range for that monthly higher low. So this is just step number one. The bears still have proving to do, but this is a red flag for the bulls to say, okay, momentum has shifted and it had a little bit of a catalyst for that shift and certainly don't wanna be going against someone who has the power to influence markets like this with just one little tweet, 240 characters. But this is now gonna make me focus on the market and look for clues of weakness in the market because the correlation between oil and the S&P 500 on this entire dump and this entire bounce has been extremely strong. And we're seeing clear weakness in oil that we are not seeing in the market. And I've always been asking myself, does Trump know the correlation between oil and the market? We know he wants the market to go up. We know he wants oil to go down. And is he going to be able to break the correlation between these two very significant instruments? So that's always been fascinating to me. And we'll see how it plays out from here. But we're watching for that daily lower high and lower low for it to be a, a clear second big red flag for the bulls. And as a bull, I would definitely be cautious looking at this monthly time frame, looking for that lower high to form after such a significant bounce the last four months. Natural gas, the monthly time frame certainly weak. The weekly time frame trying to bounce anything on the weekly under 272 and 2894 is just a lower high. And really 2894 is the level. So I need a clear weekly lower high compared to 2894, higher low, and then a trend change for a significant shift in momentum. But here on the daily, it's a nice oversold bounce. So I'm looking at 272 as a key level on the daily time frame. We did break one resistance here from the previous little bear flag. Can we form a daily higher low and higher high is the question from here, because that would confirm the first daily trend change that we have seen really I mean, a clear daily trend change, it hasn't happened in a while. So I need to see a lower high compared to 272, which is going to be likely a higher low compared to 2442, and then that follow through and trend change. So daily trend change needed for natural gas, oil, daily downtrend needs to be confirmed with a lower high and lower low. Gold, nice bounce, but we're watching resistance that we are approaching on the daily, and we're watching for a lower high compared to 1310. And can the dollar bulls keep their daily uptrend intact? All signs currently point to yes, but we'll certainly be keeping an eye on it every day. Hope you have a good weekend. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next weekend.